I mean, let's get into it. Uh, spring training is uh, is underway. That means this gentleman is not far off from getting to work. What the hell have you been doing with yourself, Javi Lopez? Seriously, for the last few months of your life, what are you doing? Well, I mean, with that lead in, I've been brushing my shoulders off. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. right. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's the same skit here. Just uh, playing a little golf, hanging out, and playing, mis- being Mr. Mom, and coaching my little man's baseball team, and watching my daughter uh, dominate a lacrosse field. Like that's the fun part of being at home right now. Ooh, but what kind of pressure is on the kids when the coach is is a former big leaguer? How's that go? You know, I mean, I'm going to name drop real fast here. My The head coach is Brian McCann, the former catcher. So he gets all the love. He's Jeez. the local guy. And I'm just the and I'm just the guy that hangs on and, and, you know, tells them a thing or two. They don't really understand my what I did. They understand what Brian did, and I love every minute of it. What, what kind of little league are you running where Javi Lopez can't even get a head gig? What the hell is this? I'm holding out for a management position. Yeah, uh, and, uh, yeah. It, the, the time wasn't right. I'm just not ready to take over. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Javi Lopez with us on Willard and Dibs. Giants still need one more. Do they still need another starter, Javi? Man, you can never have too many. I just think it's been proven so many times. And you know, I, I, I do like the young kids they got. They got a lot of them. You know, they keep win. I like what I saw from him and. Mason Black's getting some good reps right now, and Wizen Hunt and Bird Song. I mean, those are real young guys. Uh, do they get the opportunity? We'll find out. But um, you know, I think last year of having two bona fide starters and, and Webb and Cobb, and then kind of cobbling together the rest of the rotation was just really, really hard on the staff and really hard on the Giants in the sense of having to manage those arms. So if you can go grab one, I'd go grab one. But you know, there's there's uh, qualifying offers that come along with those signings. So we'll see what Farhan decides to do. How difficult is it for some of these young guys that you mentioned to step up and be a part of a big league rotation without having really thrown much, if at all, in the bigs? Yeah. Uh, speaking from a guy that's never done it, I can only imagine the kind of pressure they have. I remember my first big league camp, uh, just panic mode, just not knowing what, uh, what to do. I came from double A. And I went to my first big league camp and I'm, and I'm just standing around a couple of future hall of famers and, and I'm just trying to just stay quiet and do my thing. And now you're asking these kids to not just do that, but get in there and win a spot. So I can only imagine the pressure that they're feeling. And I do love the fact that Brian Price is there now and, and, uh, you know, um, Bob Melvin as well. Some of the older, saltier guys, I played for Bo Mel back in Arizona in 2005 and, and it's just it's just a calming presence and it's a calming voice. So I'm sure they're going to try to maximize what they can out of these kids. But the floor is theirs. You know, it's really what you can do. Whether you make the team out of spring or you make it a month later when there might be an injury, something might happen, a spot start, whatever. You know, you make your impressions now and they do last. It's 100% that that is remembered by the skippers. Javi, could you speak a little bit more to that? In your opinion, the net result of the new staff in place with the Giants this year is what? I think it's a, I, I think it's a, a bringing it back to maybe a little bit more of a traditional style. And that's not to say that um, Gabe didn't know didn't have the same kind of feel, but the staff itself uh, that Gabe put together, as opposed to the staff that Bomel has brought in, is just. Uh, a little bit more saltiness, a, a little bit more uh, a seasoning as far as major league experience up and down the board. And, you know, when you have Pat Burrell talking, um, he's probably going to attack more of a mental side and approach. Uh, you know, a few times I've talked to Pat, that that is kind of where he's going to lean into. And, and Bealy and the rest of the guys are going to still stay in the analytical side and mechanics. And the blend is what's needed. And I think Bomel has a total understanding of that. And I think he's had it. He had a good chunk of that in, in Oakland. And that's why I think he and Farhan always had a great relationship. But you do need a balance of the analytical side and and the old school player side to really strike a chord. And I mean, there was a great article today in The Athletic about the Orioles doing that. And, and you saw the success that they had. So it, it can be done. You have to strike the right balance. And I think the staff that he's put together We'll try to find a way to do that. How big of a lift is it for the Giants to have added Matt Chapman as well as the other free agent pieces this offseason? For the guys who are coming back after last year and the disappointment of the season, 
does he give you a lift going into camp knowing that the GM is out there working hard to try to improve the roster? Yeah, you know, again, Farhan, I think, is catching a, catching some heat, and, and some of it might be, I, I think, a little bit is overborne. I mean, they've gone out and spent $250 million. You know, so it's not like they're not, Maybe they're not getting the sexy splashes that they're, they're, they were talking about, but they've made some really nice moves. And again, you, it's, it's so hard when you make a move for Robbie Ray. We've seen this guy dominate. He's been in the division and we see how good he can be. Um, but again, it's not a guy that he'll be back middle of the year towards the, you know, after the all star break and Alex Cobb coming off the hip. I think the pieces are there. They're getting younger. Um, you know, the athleticism trying to get a little bit more athletic. I'm not sure if they've uh, done all that, but they've plugged a lot of holes. And I think now you have a threat to line up with Solaire, a guy that can hit it at a Yellowstone if needed. Like the guys <laughs> just have power, you know, and that's what the Giants have been missing a guy that's given you a scary at bat. And I think that's, that's one guy you brought in. And, you know, if Conforto can kind of keep it going, he's had a decent spring so far, just kind of get going, square some balls up. If we can get, if that guy can get going, man, that there's just so, so much depth in that lineup that it can pose a, you know, do you chase down the Dodgers? Who knows, but it'll give you a legitimate chance for the playoffs. Javi, give us the major leaguer perspective. Did the giants owe JD Davis, at least a phone call before the news of Matt Chapman broke? Uh, you know, that's a tough one for me because you, you would hope in this world where you're able to kind of, the big leagues are different now than I was playing. And even when I, had a situation somewhat like this. Um, I was in spring training battling for a spot with the White Sox and they were going for two lefties. One was already locked in and I'm battling for another lefty spot. And they went ahead and traded for Matt Thornton, big, tall, strong left-handed pitcher uh, from the Seattle organization. And it was kind of like this in the middle of camp. And then the writing on the wall was for me. I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to get sent down. Like they didn't owe me anything. I had a year in the big leagues. So it's a different situation. You would hope they would have had some sort of conversation, I think with JD, but at the same time, is it ever owed to you? Probably not because ultimately it's a business and you got to make the moves that are going to make your overall club better. And I think Bo Mel said it in an interview. I saw that he just told JD, go out and dominate, go do your thing. We'll find a place for you. And if we can make a move, we'll make it. If not, you're going to help us out. I mean, we still got a couple, I have three weeks left to camp. I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen and you never wish injuries or anything like that. But, you know, I don't know about Owen. I'm a, com, Owen, I'm a phone call. I just don't, I don't know if that's how big league locker rooms operate. Anymore. Yeah. And the other one was the uh, Brandon Crawford situation where, you know, he made it pretty clear that the giants are one person with the organization. I think he was pointing to Farhan, didn't want him around anymore how did does it sit with you the way that was handled with brandon crawford oh did he say something i missed it i must have missed all that uh hood conversation <laughs> no, I, you know i feel like <laughs> I, you know brandon wants to finish a giant and it's it's tugs at the heartstrings and he's always going to be my buddy like we were fantasy football partners we were willie mack award winners the same year like he's he's my dude and i'm always going to love that guy respect him and i stick up for him and you know the relationship unfortunately uh deteriorated a little bit on his from his side and 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 I get it I I do uh I, I know that he wanted to come back but sometimes you got to make that clean break and 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 let Luciano or wh whoever they go with whether it's Ahmed or somebody else maybe not have Brandon over their shoulder I think that's probably that was part of the thought process uh that Farhan had during that time I can't speak for him but in my that would be my impression that he's just like hey sometimes we got to do we got to do what's best for the club and and for Brandon I appreciate that he actually spoke his mind cuz you don't get that a lot from him in the in the 12 years that he was a giant 13 years he was a giant never he was never one to really speak like that and he was very candid and I think that was somewhat cathartic for him and now he can just kind of clear his mind and be a cardinal and and of course they finished the year in San Francisco so of course total sense How'd you do against him in fantasy football last year? Oh, well, you know, he was my partner. I was smart. I made sure I picked up a good GM. Like, oh. yeah, I was the, I was a financial backbone early in his career. And then he was making five times what I would ever <laughs> make in my career. So then he took over, which was great. Okay. Got it. So you guys were like teammates. You ran the same team. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And and how did that team do? Well, we playoffs a few times. We did take home the title once. Okay. Uh, you know, so we we left some out there. We left some out there, you're, like we like to. See. You're talking, no, but, yeah. You're talking about this in past tense. Is this over, or are you guys still in the league together? It's, it, I'm I'm retiring now. I can't afford the uh, the. Uh, oh. The, the dues are for that that yeah. kind of league. One of those leagues. You call no. them the dues. Seriously. <laughs> no. And you know you got well, a couple. I don't know if I want to do any of the payups. I mean, you saw Fleming's in that league, and he had to go be a bad boy. Like I don't want to do all that. That's a good point. That's yeah, good point. can be uh, a little bit uh, embarrassing if you you, <laughs> yeah. you wind up uh, <laughs> on the backside of that. When you look at at this this bullpen coming up this year, Javi, what do you think in terms of the mainstays and and how this can be a big positive for the team? Mark and I were talking earlier about you know this. Maybe the Giants getting back to a pitching and defense first sort of approach. What should we be looking at for the bullpen in terms of the strengths? Yeah, I think that's exactly what you're going to lean on. I think the Rogers brothers are. It's just another year together. They're going to figure it out. Uh, Taylor, I think, uh, is, is he's kind of the key. He really is for me. Um, Camilo's going to kind of. He's already established himself as one of the premier closers in the game and relievers in the game. And you know, I, I think the Rogers brothers setting up. If they can just continue that consistency and, and get uh, Taylor more involved in that that regard, and maybe even be a, an option to close from the left side, I think it's an uh, amazing thing for them. I do think I'm I'm with you on that. That they are a strike throwing bullpen. They started to get punch outs uh, probably about halfway through the year. Started locking in on being able to get strikeouts, but they are a contact oriented kind of bullpen, in my opinion. And that's why a move for Matt Chapman makes so much sense when they had like roughly a 50% ground ball rate. You need those ground balls to turn into outs. And I think now they've, they've really solidified that left side of the infield. And, you know, I do think that that is something that is going to pay off dividends. But I think that bullpen, again, it's just about usage. It always is. It's a story as old as time that you got to monitor their usage, but. I like what they're bringing back. They got a lot of veteran pieces, and then you got Amir Garrett fighting for a spot. We've seen that guy uh, be able to run it up there mid to high nineties, and you know just another another option for the Giants if if, it, if they decide to go that way. Well, Javi, it's uh, it's good to hear your voice. We know that means that uh, the uh, the season is is just about here, man. So thanks for doing it, and uh, and good luck to the little league team. Have you guys started yet, or or where are you at this season? We start this weekend. Uh, we'll we'll open up uh, the 2024 season this weekend, and the weather's not looking great, so we'll see. We might have to plan some scuba suits, but we'll find out. We'll <laughs> Perfect. Find out. Perfect. All right. Well, I'm sure you will intimidate the hell out of all the other teams. Um, good stuff. All right, Javi, man. Thanks so much. Guys, I appreciate you anytime. Okay. There it is. Javi Lopez with us here on Willard and Dibs. Can you imagine that? Your Little League game? You're over there. Javi Lopez is the freaking assistant coach. Right. What are we doing?